Welcome back to the Flutter Pipeline series. In the previous video, we created a pipeline to build our Flutter Android app and publish its AAB artifact to the pipeline's artifacts. However, currently this AAB file has not been signed yet. So in this video, we'll extend our pipeline to also include the steps to sign our Android AAB file and I'll also show you how to move the initialization steps into a template that we can then later reuse when we're setting up our iOS job. So let's get started. Looking at the Flutter docs for build and release an Android app, they have some good guidelines on signing your app. So we will need to download the latest JDK so we can have the key tool here. So one thing to note here is that this store type JKS is no longer required. And in fact, it'll give you a warning if you do add this to the command. So let's go and download the latest JDK. So the JDK is just the Java development kit. I am on Windows, so I'm gonna download the Windows installer and install that. Once you've downloaded and installed the latest JDK, you can navigate to the install location. On Windows, it's typically in C program files, Java, and go in there. There might be a JDK version already installed in your PC, but it's just safer to download the latest version since using an old version of the key tool can sometimes lead to some strange behavior. So if you scroll down, you'll see the keytool.exe, which is what we're interested in to create our key store file. And then I'm just going to open a command prompt in a workspace where I want to create my key store file. You can then drag in the keytool.exe into command prompt, which will allow us to use it since it's not, it might not be on our path yet. And we can then go to, back to the Flutter docs on building and releasing an Android app. And we can copy the appropriate command. Uh, if you're on Windows, you can copy this one. Otherwise, on Mac OS or Linux, you can copy the first command. And we can paste that in here. So currently, in its current format, it's multi-line. So I'm just going to say cancel and paste that into a notepad first. That way I can make it a single line command. Great, so I'm gonna paste that in there. So we're currently mentioning key tool twice, so we can remove the second mention since this first part that we pasted in here is already mentioning our key tool. Then we can remove this part if you're already in the folder that where you want to generate your key store. Otherwise you can leave it there and it will generate in your documents folder. So I'm going to leave it as upload key store.jks. That's fine. Then this is the part that I mentioned we should remove since we're working on a newer version than Java 9. So remove the store type jks and we could maybe change the alias if you want to. The validity is the number of days that this key store will be active, which is 10,000 days by default. You can press enter and then it's going to prompt you for a password. I believe the password needs to be at least six characters long. And it's worth noting that there won't be any printouts while you're typing. So just keep that in mind going to ask you to repeat the password and then it's going to ask you some information that you can provide but you can leave all of these blank if you prefer to and finally it will just ask you to confirm if all the information is correct it then generates our key store file so the next thing that we'll need is a key.properties file that's in this format and Flutter says that we should put this key.properties file in the project under the Android folder. However, this will contain our passwords and everything. So we don't want to 
commit this to our Git repo. So let's create a file with this format and then open it in VS Code. So we can copy this format from the Flutter docs and paste it into our file. And then we can just replace it with our own information. So the alias I changed to app alchemy, the store file. So it's currently asking for a location for the file, but by default, the key.properties file we said is in the Android folder. By default, it is searching for the key store file in the app folder inside the Android folder. So if our pipeline copies our key store file into the app folder, then we just need to specify the file's name here, which is upload key store .jks in my case. And then I'm just going to provide the same password here that I entered in the command prompt earlier. Enter the same password for both of these. Great. So now that we have both our key store file and our key.properties files, we can upload both of these files to our secure files on Azure DevOps. So on Azure DevOps, you can go to the library tab and go to secure files tab here at the top. Then you can add a secure file here by just dragging and dropping our new files in here. I want to add the other one as well. And there we go. Uh, Azure DevOps now keeps these files for us securely. You can never download them again. The only thing you can do is either delete them, change the security or permissions here, add some properties to it or change the file name. The next thing that the Flutter docs mention is a couple of changes that we just need to now make to our Android app build Gradle file. So the first thing is just declaring these in that file and above our Android tag. I'm going to copy that and bring that over. So it's in the Android folder inside the app folder. There's a build.gradle. So it's not the build.gradle right in the Android folder. So you can scroll up and just above the Android tag, we want to paste this. This is just so that Flutter knows where to find our key.properties files. Next, we need to add a signing configuration before the build times property block inside the Android property block in that same file. So right before the build types. So go back here, just before our build types, we can paste that in here. As you'll notice, it's the same structure format as we specified in our key.properties file. And then lastly, they say we need to replace the debug gear with release. And according to the docs, this will now cause Flutter to sign all release builds. So if you want to then do release builds locally still, you will have to put the key.properties file in your Android folder and your key store file inside the app folder that lives in the Android folder. But be careful not to commit that to your Git. I do think by default the Git ignore that Flutter generates should ignore those files. All right, so now we can add some extra steps to our build script to download our secure files and copy them to the right locations. So we want to do that before we perform our build. And the first task that we want to include here is a download secure file task. So we can do a quick search for that. And there's only one version of this task. So we can copy up until there, since the rest is just optional parameters and bring that over to our script. So the secure files name that we want to download is key.properties. Just going to copy it from here to make sure I'm not making a typo. And if we have a look at the Microsoft docs here on the download secure file task, you go down a bit and look at the examples. They show you how you can specify a name for this task and then later use that to retrieve that specific files file path. So that's exactly what we want to do. So let's specify a name for our task. 
So in this case, I'm just going to call this key properties and we can also give it a display name. Then we can, then we can copy this task and make a duplicate. And this time we want to download our key store file. So the key store file is upload key store dot JKS. In my case, I'm going to change the display name as well as the name. Great. This should download both those files, but we'll need a task to copy it to the right locations. So we could use the copy files task, but we'll need two of those. So instead, I'm just going to do a script here. So in a bash script, since we're in a Linux environment, you can do a CP to copy a file and we want to specify this file's secure file path the way they did it in the Microsoft doc. So I'm going to do a dollar sign in brackets, paste that file's name and do a dot secure file path. So then we have the path of the file. So then the second parameter is where we want to copy this file to, which we want to do in our build.sources directory. And inside that, which is the root of this repository, inside that we want to copy it into the Android folder. And we want to keep the file's name as key.properties and we can do the exact same thing for the other one and just tweak it a bit. Other one's name is key store in my case. We retrieve its secure file path, copy it in the Android folder inside the app folder that lives in the Android folder and then finally want to retain its name. And then just to be sure that we did our copy correctly, I'm just going to echo that these two folders contents so that we can make 100% sure that we've copied it into the right location. So I'm just going to say echo Android folder contents. And typically how you print out the contents of a folder in a bash script, if you're in a Linux environment, you do LS. If you're in a Windows environment, you do a DIR. But since we've spun up this virtual machine to be in a Linux environment, I'm going to use LS and I'm just going to copy up until there. So I want this whole folder's content. But in the current way that we've specified this echo, it will just print out LS and then <laughs> up until the Android. So we want to first run this command and then let that print out. So the way we can do that is dollar sign and unwrapping all of that in brackets. So that will cause this LS to, to execute first and then we can do the echo. So I'm just going to copy paste all of that. And this time it's going to be the app folders contents and just want to do the, the app folders contents in there. So this should copy our files to the right lo locations and then hopefully Flutter will sign it in our build step. So let's commit and push these changes and test that out. So I'm going to commit and push all of that. So you'll see the pipeline is currently paused because it's waiting for permissions for those two files for the key store and the key properties file. So you just have to permit access to both those secure files for this specific pipeline. Great. Our pipeline finished. And you'll notice it doesn't mention anything about signing the actual app. So how can we be certain that our AAB is actually signed now? Fortunately, the key tool that we used earlier to generate our key store file can also be used to check the signing of an AAB. So we can go to our pipelines artifacts and download the AAB. And then I'm just going to move that AAB into the same working directory that I was busy in earlier and just rename it to a easier name to reference to my command line. So coming back to the command line that's open in this folder, 
I'm just going to drag in the key tool again. And then what you want to do is a dash print cert. And then you can do a dash jar file. And then you can specify the file that you want to check. You can also just drag the file in here if it's in a different location. And then you can just hit enter and you will see that it was indeed signed by the certificate with the details that I entered earlier. So we know for a fact that this AAB is signed with that certificate. So well done, we, this AAB is definitely signed currently. Just before I end this video, I just want to recommend a couple more things. You'll notice in the pipeline, there was a couple of jobs that I didn't give display names. So you'll just see something like a command line. So I'm just going to add display names there to make it a bit more descriptive. Great. And then I just want to show you how you can set up a template so that we can later reuse some of these steps when we set up our iOS pipeline. So in our iOS pipeline, we would also want to install Flutter, run Flutter Doctor and do a Flutter get. We won't have to set the Java version or so. So these first three tasks, we can move into a template. So the way you can do that is by creating a new YAML file, which I'm just going to call setup flutter .yaml. And we can then cut these steps and rather paste them in here. And we can just proceed these steps again with the steps mentioned here. I'm just going to target Azure pipelines again to check my, my indentation. So that looks good. And then instead here where we had these steps explicitly specified, we can do a dash template colon and then just the files name, which is setup underscore flutter dot YAML. So if I push this now, these steps will hopefully be inserted here and executed as, as we normally would. So this ensures that you don't repeat yourself when writing multiple scripts and it allows you so that if there's an issue in one of these sections, you can fix it in one place and it will apply to all the other scripts that is using that template. So let's commit and push this. Great, so we can see it actually did fill in these steps for us exactly the way that we had it before. These three steps is just now inside that template, but it is as if we specified it in our main script. And everything has a lot better display names. So well done for getting to this point. In the next video, we'll be looking at setting up our iOS build pipeline. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so that you don't miss out on that video. See you next time.